another practice problem. I'm just going to quick set up my phone to pull this in. And there we are. Uh, today we are going to be looking at leak code number 547, Friend Circles. Um, so with that said, let's hop right into it. It's a little confusing, but um, I think if we, we go through the examples, we'll get a better understanding. So suppose there are N students in a class. Some of them are friends, while some are not. Their friendship is transitive in nature. Uh, and, and if you're like me, uh, when I think of friendship, I think of transitive properties. Uh, but for example, if A is a direct friend of B and B is a direct friend of C, then A is an indirect friend of C. So we define a friend circle is a group of students who are direct or indirect friends. So that would count as one friend circle that includes members A, B, and C. Given an N by N matrix representing the friend relationship between students in the class, if M of I of J equals 1, then the Ith and J students are direct friends with each other, otherwise not. And so we want to give out the, uh, the total number of friend circles among all students. So that's a little bit, hey Paul Sitting, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, a little bit um, convoluted, but with examples we can think about it. So we have a 3x3 three three matrix here. And so what to think about is each row is a person, but also each column represents a person as well. So what does that mean? So this top row is person zero, and it lists their friendship. So person zero is a friend with themselves. They're also a friend with a friend with person one, but they're not a friend with person three. Likewise for person one. Person one is a friend with person person zero, I'm using zero indexing here, person one is a friend with themselves but not a friend with person three, person three is only a friend with themselves. So this is going to output two. Um, now let's change the game a little bit. So this is exactly the same uh, matrix or n by n uh, list of lists, array of arrays, however you want to call it, um, but there's a one here instead of this zero. So now this friend circle returns a one. Now why is that the case? Well, person zero is still a friend with themselves and a friend with person one. Person one is friends with everybody, Mr. Popular. And uh, person two is also friends with person one because of that transitive property um, listed uh, right, right here. Um, if m of i of j equals one, then m of j of i also equals one. So this is just one big block. Everyone... Uh, because person one connects person zero and person two. So that will return a one. So this is an interesting thing. Um, and I think if we think about an approach called uh, depth first search. Basically, we want to go down one person's like friends list. And for every um, friend they have, kind of investigate who they are friends with. And then at the end of that, we want to we want to pop out. So um, to think about that a little bit more, yeah, you kind of have like a main function which we'll have right here, which is this def find circle uh, num, uh, which will uh, have a count instantiated with zero, and we're going to return that count. In the meantime, we're going to walk through this m um, well, row by row, and we're going to call off a helper function called depth first search. And in that helper function, we want to see, okay, um, is this person that we're looking at are are they um, are they a friend? And if they are, then we want to we want to call that off again. After um, it's a little confusing to think about, uh, but in the depth first search, the important thing that to call is we're walking through either, every column in the row, um, and then so you can kind of do dive deep into this these 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 friend circles. So with that said, let's. Um, Let's go ahead and code this, and I'm going to do a little bit different here. I'm going to do some bugs, and hopefully they're the bugs that I plan on, and then hopefully that informs the story. So, like I said before, we're going to have a count that's equal, equal to zero, and we're going to have people. As we said, row by row, those are all people. So, for person in range of length of m, so that'll walk through every row. Um, and then what do we want to do? We want to say... Well, just count plus or equals one, and then we just cast off um, a DFS function that we haven't yet written that's going to live on this, this class. And that's going to take a person, and also we're going to destructively move through this list of lists. 
And that's it. And then we're going to return the count to the end of the day. So let's go ahead and write that depth first search. It's going to take self, a person, and m, as we talked about before. And what is this going to do? So now in this depth first search, we pass this in a person, which is a row. And we want to walk through the row. And so in itself, I'm actually not going to call this a person. I'm going to call this a node because we're going to have another um, for loop, which has person in it here, which is a little confusing. Probably I could have done a little bit better job with this, but we'll make do. Um, and we're going to walk through. And basically, if is friend, if that value in the column is a 1, then we want to also kick off a depth first search. So let's go ahead and write that. So we want to say for person, and we could call is friend. How about that? And enumerate um, the m of the node. So that's the row that we're looking at. And enumerate says, okay, I'm gonna walk through everything. Every column is gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, and then is friend will be those binary values of zero and one. That's what enumerate does in Python. And so we just say if is friend, then we just kick out a self dot dfs of person and m and that's it and I'm going to run the code with a custom test case which is this top one here uh, 1101001001 which should output a 2 but actually this will output an error and hopefully it's the error that I'm planning on let's go ahead and run that we see a runtime error and we see line 16 runtime error maximum recursion depth exceeded while, while calling a Python object. Maximum recursion depth, that's protecting against stack overflow, which is a, uh, basically you're using too much memory. You're, you're, we're doing too many recursive calls here. So let's do a little bit of debugging on, on this. You probably wouldn't want to do this in an interview, but this, this can help inform the process. So I'm going to make something called a, a DFS counts, basically how many times we're, we're calling that DFS function. Um, it's going to start with a, a, a value of zero. And it's going to take right here. And I'm just going to print it right over here in this first line. And we're going to call it every time that we recursively call DFS, we're going to increment the DFS count. So this should show us how many times. Well, we only have a quick little 3 by 3 list here. Why the heck are we having so many calls? Let's see how many calls that, that, that's actually happening here. And you can see this standard out. It's like, oh my goodness, this is uh, quite a lot of calls. 8,095. And then it says, all right, I'm done. So sorry for putting a lot of stress on leak, um, leak code servers. So that's kind of weird. We have a 3 by 3 Why is Why are we continuously doing that? So let's get rid of that DFS count. Let's see... Which person? Are we like alternating? Are we going between 0, 1, 2? Or are we only staying on one person? So let's get rid of everything that we just added for the DFS count. And all we're going to do now here is in this for loop here is, is print the person in the DFS. So let's see where we're getting hung up here as I take a drink of water. Yeah. Uh, DFS takes exactly four arguments, three given. Ah, I need to remove that from the signature, that parameter, and that should be good. So we're just stuck on person zero for everything. Why is that the case? Haven't we already seen person zero? Big hint. Um, we 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 look at this person zero, which is this top row of one one zero. Um, which is for the person in the range, the length of m. We, we increment the count, and then we call DFS a person m. And then we say for person and is, is friend in the numerant m node, so person would be 0 and is friend would be 1 for this first person. Uh, we say if is the friend, then you just call it. But we're just calling it again and again on the first person. We're never getting out. We, we're, we're asking Alex or whoever, Alex, are you a friend with yourself? And they say yes. 
And you say, okay, that's great, but Alex, are you friendly with yourself? You say yes, and so on. Repeat that 8,095 times until we we have a re uh, maximum recursion error. So, what's the main concept that we want to get with this with uh, with this problem? We want to have a scene set or a visited set of, of people that we've already seen. We know not to hit them again. Um, and so we're just going to add a few lines to this to this code, and it's going to end up working. So if we have that set of scene, we instantiate it. It's, it's empty at the start. And as soon as we see a person uh, down here in the, in the DFS, we're going to add them. And then we're going to DFS from there. And so that way, we... We can move on from that first. Uh, that first, Alex, are you a friend with yourself? Yes, and then actually go walk through all the additional people. So let's go ahead and do that. So how we make a set in Python is one way: this uh, scene equals set, and for a person in range of length of m, we want to say if person not in scene up here, and yeah, then we just tab those in. And if you're not familiar with Python, uh, white space is, is logically important. So those will now fall into the if loop. And then we return the count at the end of the day. So in our DFS helper function, how are we going to use scene? Well, first we're going to get rid of this print person because it's not important anymore. And we say if is friend. So if the person listed is a friend, and what else? Well, very similarly, not only does it have to be a friend, but we have to say and not in scene. And it's going to be important too. We need to pass that in. Otherwise, this DFS um, won't have any idea what, what this scene is. So we do here. So if, if his friend is and not in scene, so if they're a friend and not in scene, what do we want to do? Well, we just saw them, right? Or we're just about to see them because we're about to recursively call this uh, DFS. We're just going to take a scene. Um, and so we just want to add the person to the scene set. And good, let's go ahead and run this code. We get a compiler, invalid syntax on line 17. Oh, the person is not seen. Well, let's take a little look. So, we, so let's walk through before we, we run through this code. We instantiate a count in the def find circle. We instantiate a set um, that's empty. And then we walk through the rows of this list of lists or array of arrays, and if the person is not in the scene, we increment the count, other, and we uh, do a DFS on that person. So we see all the friends that they have, and all the friends of the friends that they could have, and so on recursively. So that way, you completely mop out, mop out, map out the circle of friends that's possible, and then at the end of that, you return the count. So if you have a scenario, and how am I doing on time? Uh, if you have a scenario like here. Um, you'll map out person zero, and you'll see person one is added to that friend circle. So when you when you do this for loop and you move to person one, the person is in scene, so you don't increment the count. Then you move to person two, they're not in scene, so then we increment the count. We've we've made a new friend circle, and that's the main idea behind the problem. Now let's take a look at our DFS. So our person now we walk through column by column of each row uh, is friend and enumerate if it's is. If the is friend is true, so they have that, then we then we and the person is not in scene, then we go ahead and add that person to it, and then we jump down into that too. And we we recursively map out the friend circles. So hopefully this is good. Expect an answer of two. And uh, my answer is two. And we go ahead and submit the solution. And we'll think about this, and we're accepted. Let's see how quick we are. I've seen it vary a little bit. 92.44% of Python submissions. Not too bad. Um, this is a, a breadth first, excuse me, depth first search uh, recursive solution of, of friend circles. The Let's just double check. It's it, it's um, slightly different than the the preferred answer um, in Java, but no, it's ba it's basically the same, just written in Python. And the time complexity is O of n squared. Um, so we look at uh, the entire matrix. We have to visit every single um, 
complete the, uh, matrix, so it's n squared, and the space complexity is o, o of n because the visited array of sign size n is used. Thanks a lot, uh, solution to leak code. So uh, with that said, this is 547 friend circles, a leak code medium. Uh, a fun little problem showing at least one way of, of doing it. This is a depth first search. You can also solve this with breadth first search or with a union find. Um, but here's the solution that we have uh, for today. And with that said, I'll, um, this is Programmer Mitch signing out. I'll be catching you next week uh, when I might revisit the Sudoku solver with a little bit more uh, interesting solution to that. Uh, with that said, I am signing out, and I'll catch you next time.